Hey guys. Hey guys, so I'm gonna do a quick video. I was talking to um, Dennis. Um, he's one of our subscribers. <clears throat> um, we were talking about pistons and sizes and stuff. Um, he's get he's starting to work on a, a race motor, and I, it was easier for me just to to do a quick video um, than it was to to text it to him. And I'm I'm so busy during the day, guys. It's hard for me to um, be able to like I can't take phone calls and stuff like that. I hardly have enough time to take the phone calls that are coming in for the work that we're doing in the shop. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. I am going to look into maybe doing some live stream stuff. So if you guys have questions that you want me to answer, um, like live stream wise, you can ask the question, then I can answer the question um, that way. Um, just makes it a little bit more time, uh, I don't know, time sensitive is the right word, but you know, like I can set an hour aside to answer some questions for you guys. If that's, got, if that's something you guys are interested in, uh, let me know in the comments, please. Uh, also, please like my videos, it does make a difference. Um, I know some people don't think it makes a difference, it does make a difference. Um, especially it makes a difference to me. It makes a difference to YouTube as well, but it makes a difference to me um, knowing that you guys are liking what I'm doing. So the question was, was how to figure out um, your ring gap, how big your ring gap should be, and then how big um, your piston to wall clearance should be. Now it's kind of one of those things, it's hard to, it's hard to, there's no set amount. So it's, there's guidelines, but no set amount. So depending on what you're doing, obviously. If it's a daily driver truck you're using for towing, your piston to wall clearance, whether it be a 12 valve, a VP4459, a common rail 59, or a 67, um, you're between five and six thou. So usually I do um, one through five at five thou piston to wall clearance. Number six, I do at six thou, because that cylinder likes to run hot. Um, between five and a half and six thou, depending on what's going on. So that's like a stock, stock engine. Um, and then your ring gap side of things, um, you're gonna be, um, actually I guess I should. So, so piston to wall clearance, um, for you guys that don't have um, measurement tools to measure that stuff, we will get into doing, like I'll do it, when we do the 12 valve, when we put the 12 valve together, we're gonna measure the pistons, we're gonna measure the piston wall clearance. So this is just a short video of how you guys can quickly do it at home to, you know, if you pull an engine apart and you can't find a part number on the engines, or on the, the pistons, you'll be able to do just a quick idea on what you got sitting there. Um, this isn't per se, this isn't the way to do it if you are, um, if you're setting stuff up for critical stuff like you can't do it this way. This is just a general idea to give you an idea. Okay, my bores are already 20 over, um, you know, my and that the pistons are 20 over, or you know, gives you a general idea within, let's say within a couple thou, which is enough for for most what most guys are doing. So when you're measuring a piston, what you want to do <clears throat> is actually a lot of pistons. Yeah. See. So look at this piston here that has the coating on it. You see that little spot right there? That's where you're supposed to measure it for the size was that little spot there so if you take a piston like so brand new piston right i just took it out of the box that's the box right here this is like i said you should be using a pair of uh a pair of mics for doing this this will get you a general idea of what you got for a piston size so your two inch on this it's not exact so your two inch 227 thou this is a factory standard piston that's a 20 over piston Your, your four inch 207 thou. Okay, so we go back to this one. Four inch 226 thou. So you know that this one is standard. This one's 20 over. So in millimeters, you're talking 20 thou over piston is gonna be 0.5 millimeters. So half a mil. So just to give you guys a general idea. So you need to measure Rule of thumb, depending on the piston, but rule of thumb is usually half an inch to three quarters of an inch. If you have a little window like that in there, then you, that's where you measure it, is in that little window. You don't measure the coating. You measure in that little window. So 
Now, at this point, we know that this piston is a 20 over piston for a 6.7, which I already knew, but anyways. Um, so in some way you can do, if you can see part numbers on it, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that in the video. They're hard to read, even hard to read when you're standing here. Um, but that'll give you your part number. So your 2243732, and then period 020, it will be main 20 over. So if it has nothing there, it'll be a standard, or it'll be stamped standard, or if it's not in a 6.7, you can't get a 40 over piston, but um, just to give you guys an idea. Now, you can get a bunch of different pistons, obviously. So it the so the first two the first three numbers is going to be the designation of how the piston so this is a 225 which is a rebore kit but this is the piston out of it but this part number is a rebore kit they call it so then you, if you don't have a rebore kit you could have a a 224 and then in here in between the two in the period with wr would be with rings and if there's no wr with a four you would only then you would be a two two four three seven three two period zero two zero would be with no rings. So you want to watch with that. If it's point if it's uh, a two two five, then it'll have rings. If it's a two two four, um, yeah, two two four with an a wr, then it'll be with rings. It's not really uh, I don't know. It might be confusing, um, but. It's if it has if it's a WR it'll be with rings if it's a five it'll be with rings, so that's but just something that you, I know guys that have had issues with it. Now these kits do come with so if you buy them with rings uh, or without rings it will come with the pins and the clips, um, so you don't need to worry about that because if you buy cheap pistons that don't come with pins and don't come with clips, um, or sometimes they'll come with the clips. But if you're rebuilding it you need to put pins too. You have to do pins because they do wear, they, they, so you need pins. So if, the reason that I used a 6.7 piston was because I have a 6.7 block sitting here that we just, literally just, we just finished before the end of the day here. So, um, and it's for a customer that's coming to pick it up. But so if you take this, like I said, there again, I will show you guys when we put the, the, the 12 valve together. You can take your calipers and just put it in the bores. So I'm going to be awful careful with this one because this one's ready. To, this one's finished. Yeah, so you can see there we're four we're four inch two hundred and thirty thou using this, which is not a perfect accurate measurement, but it gives you a general idea. So if you were standard, you wouldn't be able to get it to that point, right? So um, that is something that I wanted to show you guys. It's really not that difficult. But like I said, when you're going into, if you're, if you have a block that's sitting there and you don't have the measurement tools to per se do it properly, um, which if you guys are building engines, I would recommend to have a good set of micrometers and a dial bore gauge so you can check stuff properly. Um, but that's there again, I know not everybody can afford that, but if you're rebuilding an engine yourself, the money you're saving, you can buy yourself a few hundred dollars worth of tools and still be saving a bunch of money. So. want to uh and that i think that's pretty much all the question it was um as far as that goes so like i said with part numbers and stuff it'll just be the number after so if this you know if you had a you know a 30 well you can't get 30s so but you'd be 20s 40s um or standards and standard would be uh s t d right for standard and bearings are the same way so um i don't know if there's anything else on that one actually just let me check here So talking about piston to wall clearance, got my handy dandy bookie here, or my handy dandy pad here. So piston to wall clearance, so your factory on a Cummins, your factory is gonna be five to six thou, piston to wall clearance. Um, you can go more than that factory, it's just that they like to rattle. Um, so now that's a factory. So you're talking, let's say under, I don't know. Let's say you're talking uh, stock to 600 horse, let's say. 
you even want to be you don't want to be careful it's a temperature thing more than anything right so if you're going to go above that so 650 one i guess or six 601 to let's say 800 um i'm going to go your piston to wall clearance i'm going to go on the higher end on that you're going to be a, a six probably like i said it depends on application right six to seven thou and then when you get above that range and you get into basically into a race motor um ah i don't even know you're probably going to be even at 800 you're probably going to want to make that into an eight like i said it's more application like you have to know what the guy's doing uh with the truck it makes a big difference now at that point then after above that if you're talking in the thousand plus range um you're probably you're going to be talking in the 10 to to 15 thou range so you're a thousand like eight like say so you can even knock that down to 750 seven uh let's say 800 um which i realize leaves a gap there but like you know 1200 ish i'm saying you probably should be in that there again depending on what you're doing with it um you want to be in that realm heat has everything to do with it and then if you're going like super extreme um you know you're probably talking uh super extreme build you're talking 20 thou big thing with 20 thou is that it's rattly it bangs it crashes that's not an engine you're running all the time even at 15 thou they make a lot of noise and it's hard on pistons you crack pistons break cylinder walls they need to be up to temp temperature uh, my daily driver i run at seven um and i've never had an issue with it uh, my race truck it's at 10 and a half to 12 as the cylinders go along um so it's like i said it's an application thing it's hard it's not like just a cookie cutter type of thing and then ring gap is the same kind of idea if you're talking ring gap so ring gap you're on your top ring you're gonna go uh, your rule of thumb on uh, an application a factory to high horsepower application um but your your top ring in my there again in you know the average dude is your whoops that's not enough zeros your four and a half thou per inch of bore size per inch um, and then your intermediate which is basically your second ring down um, you're going to be five and a half thou per inch. Like I said, this is like a stockish application. So let's say 750 and down. Um, and then your oil ring, your oil ring is basically going to be, you know, like you can put it in, in and around, um, that same, you're going to be five thou per inch kind of idea. Now there again, you get into high, high horsepower stuff. Um, you know, your ring gaps can be, you know, like seven, seven thou eight thou nine thou some guys go um for most of the stuff that i'm doing um you know we're never going even at the extreme type if you're doing lots of nitrous and it's going to run crazy hot yeah you want to run more but there again it's not a cookie cutter type thing so it's hard to you know are you running compounds are you not running compounds are you running nitrous um, how long is it going to be at sustained heat for? Like there's a lot of, a lot of input that goes into that. So, you know, like it's hard to, it's hard to, but that's a rule of thumb. If you're talking to stock application and if you go in a book, um, and I will, I'm going to add this to a section in my, my website, um, which hopefully there again, hopefully it'll be up sooner than later. Um, I'm going to give a bunch of like all the specs and all the stuff that I use for different horsepower, for different horsepower, um application and combos and all that stuff i'm going to write all that in there it's going to take me some time because there's it's a lot of information and i have to input it in there by hand and one i don't spell very good and i don't type very good for a second so anyways um i just i wanted to you know what talk to a, a little bit about it so if you guys have i'll try to you know there again if you guys message me i'll try to do my best to try to help you with 
with that stuff for your application. But if you send me a message, I need to know all of the information, what you're doing, what transmission you have, what you're using for fuel system, how much power you wanna have, what you're using it for. I need to know all of that in the message. Um, and like I said, I'll do my best to try to get, get at you. Um, so for um, Dennis's, um, he wants to run a 12 valve race truck and he's looking to make a bunch of power. Like he wants to make like 1200 horsepower. And I haven't got into it with him with as far as like the internals have gone and gone on uh, as far as that goes. So I need to get into it with a little bit on that. That's why I was thinking the live stream might be cool um, if that's something you guys are interested in. Um, but anyways, what I wanted to do, um, I was gonna do a quick rundown on his. He wants to do a drag truck, 1200 horsepower setup. So in, what I would do for that, for, for, for settings, um, so just for instance on his, or on yours, if it happens to be Dennis that's watching it. Uh, if you're talking in the, 12, the 1200 horsepower range, your uh, piston to wall, I would be putting it in the 10 to, if I was building it, 10 to 15 range. Um, now piston wise, that's something that, you, you know, you'd have to talk to whoever's putting it together for you. If you're putting it together, wherever you're buying your pistons from, that's, uh, you know, like that's something that you need to talk to them about. Um, or you can talk to me if you're interested in buying them from us. Um, but one of those things, um, now talking ring gap side of things, um, I would be wanting to go large on the ring gap side of things. Um, so you'd want to be, uh, intermediate and then your oil. Honestly, your oil, it doesn't see a lot of heat, so the oil ring doesn't need to be crazy. So that one can stay at 5 thou. Um, your intermediate ring, I would probably be putting that at probably eight and a half thou per inch. And then your top ring, I'm gonna say you're probably gonna wanna be seven to seven and a half thou um, per inch just for that and then your oil clearances that's another game on top of that you have oil clearance stuff and coated yeah so you know you get into the bearings like coated bearings and oil clearances there's a lot that goes into putting a high horsepower engine up together it's not just bolted together and hope for the best there is a lot of information that needs to go input for that engine to run and stay running um, that's why most of them are going to be build to order type stuff it's not a cookie cutter type thing because one application, you know, you do one thing for one application, you do something for something else, it just doesn't work out for you. So um, hopefully that helps you a little bit, Dennis, uh, to understand what I was talking about. And I will be doing on the 12 valve when we put it together, we're gonna measure the pistons, measure the bores, and make sure we get it where we want it. And uh, anyways, we'll uh, give me a like, um, subscribe if you have it, if you want to. And uh, you got any questions, hit me down below. Let me know on the live stream and we'll catch you on the next one.